So, uh, okay, so I, uh, Rajesh said I should welcome people to ICTS. So, welcome to ICTS. Uh, I won't spend because time because it's just uh, 12 minutes. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, so I'll talk about uh, revisiting the Z uh, Zillard engine. So, I think most people have heard about the Zillard engine, and uh, so there's some stuff we did about this. So, this work is done with uh, uh, postdoc chair uh, Deepak Bhatt and Anupam and Sanjeev. So I should say that uh, Deepak is really the, uh, has been the driving force uh, in this problem, uh, in this entire project, and we have been working on it for last, uh, I think, one and a half years or something. Uh, it's turned out to be quite a complicated problem. Uh, so he also has a uh, poster uh, in the poster session. So I <coughs> uh, encourage people to visit that uh, poster. And if you have really tough questions, you should really ask uh, Deepak, and uh, I think Sanjeev is also here. Anupam is probably not here. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, so what is the problem? Okay, so this is the Zillard engine problem. So basically, there's a, a box, and imagine there's just a single particle inside the box, and uh, then there's this uh, demon. So this is from some internet. I just fixed this picture. Uh, so there's the demon, and he uh, the demon makes an observation and uh, to see where the particle is, and uh, okay, so it insert and then it inserts a piston. Okay, so in the middle of the box. Okay, and then uh, depending on uh, which side of the uh, 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 partition the particle is, so that uh, I mean, so once one makes an, makes a an measurement and knows which side the particle is, and uh, depending on which side is, you put a load, and then this particle, what it does is it exerts pressure on this uh, piston. So the piston will slowly move from here to here in the process. Uh, this gas is uh, gas single particle gas is doing uh, it's doing work so it raises this load let's say so it's doing work uh, and uh, so it's working like an engine so that's how it's extracting uh, work and so where does this energy come from so basically this part uh, this particle is interacting with a thermal wall let's say okay. so this particle inside this box uh, this is a thermal wall so it's always at constant temperature so it's doing work in this process, which means it's extracting uh, energy from the uh, heat bath. Okay, so uh, in this process, uh, okay, so it goes to the end, and then you <coughs> you remove the piston and re uh, again do this uh, cycle, keep doing the cycle again and again. So the, uh, at the end of the cycle, the important point is the uh, this guy is still at the same temperature, so it's returned to its original state. Okay, so it's a cyclic process. And in the cyclic process, you uh, extract some work, and this work came from the heat reservoir. Okay, and there's no other change in the universe. Okay, so uh, so you can calculate what is the work done. So basic, basically, it's an isostatic process. You put a load which exactly balances the pressure, and so the work done is basically this is the pressure, uh, uh, and uh, so even so, it's just equal to n k b t uh, by v. N is one, so it's KBT by V. This is the pressure into a, a displacement, uh, and this is from you go from the center of the uh, box to the end of the box. So that's the uh, integral. So if you do this, you find you get KB. Uh, okay, so there should be a T KBT log two. Okay, so as I said, the wall is thermal, so that the particle remains at constant temperature and heat flows into the system during the expansion. And just from energy conservation, you know that heat absorbed by the system uh, must be KBT log two. And it's a cyclic process, so the only the system is completely in its uh, original state at the end of the cycle. Uh, so the only change is that heat has been uh, some heat has come from the uh, reservoir. Okay, so since it's a heat absorbed, the change in entropy of the reservoir is uh, minus delta Q by T. Okay, so that is minus KB log two, which means if it is less than zero, uh, which means uh, that's a violation of the second law. Right, entropy of the universe has gone down. I mean, it's a, a very, it's a process which can't happen. You have extracted energy from the path and converted it into work. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so this is the paradox. It's a thought experiment leading to a paradox. And uh, a popular resolution uh, given is that the measurement uh, process leads to, uh, uh, I mean, like you gain some information. So you gain one bit of information during this process. And uh, this corresponds to a generation of entropy uh, KB log 2. So therefore, uh, you have also generated some entropy. So it's not just entropy decreasing. So finally, the total entropy is uh, is equal to uh, change in entropy is equal to zero or greater than zero, depending if it's perfect process. Its uh, change is zero. Okay. So that's the popular resolution of the uh, paradox. Uh, 
Uh, I must say that uh, this, like, uh, I, I personally, I don't like all this, uh, like, uh, I don't understand completely this information business, and uh, it's, that it seems just a way of saying things, and, uh, like, finally, one should ask, like, what is the entire, uh, like, making a measurement involves a lot of process and so on. Uh, then there's a lot of things, like, you put the uh, piston, take it out, and all those things, uh, and it's not clear that uh, this is uh, this is really a... Uh, correct explanation or not. Uh, okay, so I should say that this thing has become very popular recently uh, because of this uh, interest in stochastic thermodynamics. Uh, and this is a nature physics uh, uh, review article called Thermodynamics of Information where they discuss this uh, problem. And there, actually there are a lot of experiments that have been done which kind of uh, came to actually model the Zillard engine. Okay, so on various systems like uh, nanodots and colloidal particles and so on. So I won't go into this. Okay, okay. so whatever, uh, what we do is uh, basically we don't look at these philosophical aspects, but just try to uh, understand it from a very practical point of view. Uh, and our main goal is to understand the microscopic dynamics of, the, of this simple uh, system. So basically we focus on this uh, uh, one-dimensional version of this uh, problem. So we have a one-dimensional box, let's say, and uh, there's this particle. And the piston is, uh, is you, uh, so we want to model everything completely uh, from mechanics, dynamics, okay. So the piston itself is a very uh, large, uh, is a particle of large mass, okay. Uh, so these are the degrees of the piston and this is the particle. And then you put a load on the piston, so this, there's some force uh, uh, acting on this piston particle. And this small particle has, uh, interacts with the path. And what we want to understand uh, is basically, can you write an effective dynamics for the piston? So piston is, I mean, like, it's clear that this is a small system, so there will be a lot of fluctuations. So, so what is exactly the dynamics of this piston? Okay, so the idea is that this guy is small, so it's uh, in, a, in the time at which it moves by some times, uh, uh, the time scale at which this moves, this guy does a very, uh, like, there will be, uh, uh, this guy moves a lot, okay. So this is a fast degree and this is a slow degree. And uh, what we want to do is kind of eliminate this fast degree and write an effective equation for the slow degrees of freedom. Okay, so uh, main results, uh, so in, since there's not much time, I'll uh, tell you what the main results is. So I'll say that we have a claim uh, that we can write a Langevin equation of motion for the piston. This is the heavy mass. So it's just a two particle system with a heat path driving the system and there's an external potential. And the effective dynamics that we claim is uh, for the piston is something like this. Uh, so this is the usual uh, Newton's equation. Uh, and then there's a pressure term, kBT by x. Uh, but then there's also a, a dissipative term and a, a noise term. Okay. So the dissipative term looks like this. It's minus gamma v, but the uh, gamma depends on, also on the distance of the particle, uh, of the, uh, the position of the piston. So as it goes far, further and further, the dissipation becomes less because the, obviously the gas effect of the gas is less. Okay. And then there's a noise term, and the strength of the noise is, uh, is what you usually expect from a fluctuation dissipation theorem. Uh, so it's, of course, it's a kind of multiplicative noise. Uh, so that's the final equation. And we know this constant C uh, is given by some expression like this. And okay, so now uh, this, what is this C? So if you do a naive uh, calculation, what you get is C is 1. Okay. Uh, what, uh, then uh, we have done lots of simulations, and what we find is actually C equal to pi. Okay. So this has been a very big puzzle. I mean, uh, yes, we initially thought it's some uh, mistake in the calculation. But it seems uh, the calculations are, the naive theory um, does give C equal to 1, and uh, simulations give pi. And what have we have been trying is basically to uh, uh, do a, a derivation starting from a master equation for the, this complete system. So eliminate fast degrees of variables, write an effective Fokker, Fokker Planck equation for P, X, C, and then uh, just read of the Langevin equation. So that's the philosophy. Okay, and then there are other results uh, that we have also obtained, like various things about energetics of the Zillard engine and the optimum protocol and so on. Uh, okay, so let me just show, show some simulation results which, uh, which justify the claim I am making. So this is like if you do uh, comparisons between uh, direct simulations and solution of the Langevin equation okay, that I just wrote. And in the Langevin equation, there were various uh, possible choices of the C constant. And uh, so this is, if you just use the naive theory, this is what you get. Uh, this is from the calculation, but with a naive uh, kind of uh, uh, 
this I'll explain later. And this is uh, if you use the factor pi. Okay. So you can see that uh, it works extremely well. Okay. So it's important that you put the noise dissipation terms, otherwise you'll get completely different results. So it's important that you account for fluctuations in the dynamics of the system. Okay, so this is another case that we also studied where uh, you have a big particle, what? Your question, no, uh, your time, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so this is another system where you have one big particle and two small particles, okay. And then you can also put lots of small particles, one big particle, uh, which is the usual, uh, like, uh, way you try to derive uh, Brownian motion, one big particle in a sea of small particles. In that case, case, actually, you can do a derivation and it's, uh, you get uh, the correct thing, but this case is more tricky. Okay, so this is uh, just some details. Uh, this is the kind of master equation you uh, start with. Uh, so the, when you write the master equation, there's usual uh, drift terms, and then there's a collision with this path, and then there's collision between these two particles. Okay. And uh, you know, then what we are trying to do basically is uh, is uh, trying to do some uh, like uh, you introduce uh, some uh, new variables. Uh, so that uh, you, uh, so basically the part big particle has a very small velocity, right? Because uh, if you look at long times, it will kind of reach thermal equilibrium, which means uh, capital M into V square is equal to order one. So V is very small, okay? So uh, you use the variables which are order one, and then you try to uh, make, an, uh, make a systematic expansion of the master equation, and then uh, kind of solve the equations at each order and try to find the effective equation for the uh, big particle. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, so maybe I'll uh, just uh, stop. I mean, so this has. I mean, so you can get uh, more details in uh, Deepak's poster. I mean, uh, so it, uh, this. Uh, I mean, it has been really frustrating. Like this equation looks kind of simple, but uh, uh, I mean, actually, we find all kinds of divergences and all. If you uh, just do a naive calculation, and uh, which is probably related to some slow relaxation of the single particle uh, in a box problem. So, okay, so I'll stop there. Question, comment? KB log 2. Yeah. Right, so if you, uh, KB log 2, okay, so, I mean, so if you just take the infinite mass limit, then it's actually, it's more or less a deterministic motion. And if you put the weight appropriately, like, uh, for some choice of weight, okay, uh, of the, this external potential, you'll get KB log two in the end. So there's no right. problem with that. I mean, so that of course, there's no problem. No, so this, okay. So I should say this calculation, not, this says nothing about the paradox because we are just looking at part of the cycle of this entire thing. We are not talking of measurements and all. So that was our ultimate goal. To also try to actually uh, construct an entirely autonomous thing where we don't, I mean, where everything is taken into account. But right now we are stuck with the first uh, step of the cycle uh, of this engine. I had another question. Is there uh, any work on uh, a quantum system where the particle and the bath are quantum mechanical, but the yeah, piston? There are versions of quantum Zillard engine and so on. Right? But, but there, of course, it's even more complicated because the measurement changes the state of the system and so on. But there are quantum Zillard versions. So, what is the reason that you don't like the Landauer principle? Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, okay, I don't know this. Uh, I mean, I don't see finally what it says. Like, you say you put something to information. I mean, but in practical terms, I'm saying, like, uh, like if you look at all these experiments, for example, okay. I mean, just to do the experiment, like, you have to measure, like, you have to do, uh, you're generating entropy, like, uh, infinite amount. Just maintaining lasers and so on, okay. But in principle, you're just saying that those, in principle, they can be uh, neglected. Right, yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying that you neglect a lot of terms which I don't understand why. Thought experiment, you just say that you can ignore all those, right, yeah. So actually, I just, I, on the internet I was looking at, it's, uh, there's an article which says this is the worst thought experiment ever. <laughs> and there's a, uh, there's a book on collection of thought experiments. Uh, and this author says, I mean, it's practical question. I mean, uh, are you saying that you're not comfortable with the idea that information is a physical quantity and laws of thermodynamics should apply to it? 
Yeah, I'm not very comfortable. Okay, I mean that's all. Maybe it's I mean like I don't maybe I don't understand it very well, but somehow I.